Hey everyone. Uh, my name is Blake. Uh, I'm from DC Comics, and uh, up here we have Brad Walker from Aquaman. <laughs> this thing is it? Yeah, it's on. Hi, four people. Hey. Nice to see all four of you. <laughs> What's going on, Brad? How you doing? Uh, good. I'm good. You look great. My hand is tired. This is probably gonna look awful. Uh, I'm ready for it. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. Eject that man. <laughs> get him out of here. Hecklers in the crowd, get out of here. <laughs> Brad, what are we going to draw today? Well, uh, I'm working on Aquaman, so even though everybody wants Harley Quinn, I'm going to draw Aquaman. Awesome. <laughs> Anybody reading Aquaman? Anyone? Yeah. yeah. At least three people in this convention center read Aquaman. It's great. Mediate's not reading Aquaman. What a shame. Is cool. this, where's this going? Uh, it's going up there. Oh, nice. There's your okay. hand. Oh, creepy. All right. All right, so uh, I'll probably go quiet, and then you'll talk to Blake, and then he'll pat me on the back of the head, and I'll say something. Yeah, I know. So, Brad, what, um, you just started on Aquaman. Right. What, is your, what, what drew you to the project? Uh, well, I had talked to my editor, Brian Cunningham, about working on something with him. Uh, and he brought up Aquaman, and I, I've been a big Aquaman fan um, going back to late 80s, early 90s probably, um, and read him pretty consistently. And it seemed, like, uh, it seemed like a fun book where I could draw a lot of things that I draw. I've been drawing science fiction books for a couple years, and a lot of the stuff that appealed to me about drawing science fiction books was still things that I could tap into with Aquaman, but in a completely different way. You know, I think like an underwater environment uh, is kind of science fiction-y in, in the unknown aspect of it. You know, you, anything can exist underwater, and in a comic book, you can, sure. you can make anything um, anything out of it. So, uh, so that really appealed to me, but in, in a completely different way than I'd been uh, doing it out in outer space, so... Um, and I love nature. I love drawing animals and wildlife and environments and thing, things like that. So it kind of provided all that for me. So, Do you use a lot of reference? I mean, you're talking about undersea and you're trying to make things a little bit realistic. So what kind of references are you using? I use a lot of reference in general. Like I'll reference uh, facial expressions, um, posture, things like that. Um, and the more you do it, the better you get. But it, it helps eliminate some uncertainty in drawing, you know, I do a lot less er less erasing because I have the answer right there. If I pose in front of my laptop camera or something, um, the answer's there, and I just have to get it instead of guess at it. So um, I've done it so long that now I'm kind of I, I find that I don't need it as much, but I still, you know, it's there, and it's it's sort of like I, I think of it as like a healthy crutch. <laughs> where um, is your is your Wikipedia search history full of octopus or octopi it's, and whales oh, that's, and that's stuff? That's not even the half of it. I'm probably flagged on so many <laughs> government lists for that. I don't, but I don't think looking up sharks is terrorism. You can't. When I put I guns mean, on them, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> I literally was drawing whales with with guns mounted all over all over them the other day, and I just thought, like, what a what kind of a job is this? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of handle do you have on drawing sea life at this point? Do you feel comfortable with it, or it's still weird. getting there? Uh, when I was a little kid, I was really into whales um, and and just aquatic. And the two things that I drew most consistently were uh, Spider-Man and, and dolphins, like every day. And now I kind of am drawing, you know, superheroes with dolphins in the book. So it's sort of, uh, it's right in line with what four-year-old Brad <laughs> did did for his living. What uh? So what was? Do you remember the first thing you ever drew? I think it was Spider Man. I think I, I seem to remember. I used to watch that um, that '60s cartoon. I don't uh, know who Spider Man is, but I'm sure he's very cool. He's a brand. He's a property from some other. Sounds <laughs> sounds outdated to me. I don't... <laughs> um, but I, I I remember my mother teaching me how to draw like a circle head with the little upside down oh, yeah. eyes, and you know. And so you're saying you read Aquaman as a kid. Are there any particular stories you remember that you enjoyed? Or I think I got into it shortly before all the, the Peter David Hookhand stuff. Um, 
And I, I like that like, stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah, I feel like it went on for a surprisingly long amount of time. Um, is that you feedbacking or me? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Doesn't Never matter. done this before. <laughs> Don't yell at me. You haven't? Uh, well, not publicly. I'm like the veteran of yeah. you. I usually just look at your art and talk to myself <laughs> in my room. Is that how you practice to do this? Yeah, I, I read Aquaman the other day and pretended Brad was with me. I have a photograph of him next to my bed, too, so it's... You said to yourself, I gotta talk to this? Yeah, no, 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 no. It was the opposite. So as you're working on Aquaman, what, what kind of challenges are Just, you... You can't even really see this It's yet, coming though. out a little bit. Right. I mean, you can kind of see it. You give, can see it me, happening. Give me a minute. It'll get there. Yeah. It looks good. What, so what... Um, you're working with undersea stuff and a lot of expansive worlds. Is there anything that you've met like that's a big challenge in terms of Aquaman? Well, strangely, in the first arc, we've barely done any undersea stuff. It's all been on land so far. Um, I think I've done like one page in the actual comic where they're underwater, and it was such a pleasure to finally get to. Um, all right, well, here we go. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm still sort of looking forward to getting more sea stuff in the book. I've done some covers with, with sea stuff. The covers oh, yeah. have been a lot of fun because with the, with the twice a month schedule, they're coming so fast that we actually have more information than usual when you go into doing the cover. Usually you don't know anything about what's going to happen in the comic by the time you are doing the cover, and the editor will, will just say something like, you know, he's going to fight Ocean Master this issue. And that's kind of all you're going on. But I have, for Aquaman, I've had pretty detailed plot synopsis for, for each issue by the time I'm doing the cover. So it's been really nice that I can sort of tell a story just with the covers alone. So even though with the schedule I'm not able to draw every issue, I kind of feel like in a small way I'm, I'm still telling a whole story as I go through cover to cover, which is really cool. Do you so you're I can see you're drawing Aquaman's costume here is between the scales on his costume and the air bubbles that are coming up all the time is that do you enjoy that does it calm you does it bring you to an inner peace Yeah there's been this the bubbles especially actually are pretty therapeutic um, the scales have been an interesting thing because I draw them a little differently than everybody else and some of the like hardcore fan sites really didn't like it at first I think they've sort of settled into it but um, I didn't really realize it was that different the way that I was drawing them, but I guess any little variation for, for the hardcore fan base was more than they were prepared for. Um, but I draw them a little less uniform, and originally I just did it. Um, I feel like there was a visual justification for it, and that I always thought that it was weird as a kid that he wore fish scales because he likes fish. So I thought it was weird that he was wearing like the hide of one of his friends, you know? I don't think um, he skinned them and then wore his friends. As a little kid, that, that was all that I could figure. It's pretty twisted, man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, drew, I draw more like, like pebbles from like the ocean floor. Um, when you think of Aquaman, what, do you, what design element do you gravitate towards of his costume? It's, very, it's a very iconic costume drawn by dozens and dozens and dozens of great artists over the years. Yeah, I, uh, I have strong opinions about the color schemes of the uh, the classic superheroes in particular because I feel like that was such a huge part of what resonated with kids. I think we underestimate sometimes how much kids are drawn to color and you see so much of like in the superhero movies these days everybody's sort of wearing black and there's maybe like, Not as like garish an accent colors, color right? to yeah. it. And I think we overlook how much kids really like attach themselves to color and the first thing that any new adult that they meet will ask them is what's your favorite color and it's kind of drilled into their head and, and I remember as a kid the characters that I liked Superman and Spider-Man they were the colors that I liked Yeah. so, so I felt really strongly when we uh, were looking at the design of the book that I wanted to keep the classic color scheme because those things really um, really meant something to me so I wanted to make sure that he was green and orange um, I think they've been drawing it more of a gold lately and I really wanted it to be like a bright orange, and I talked to Gabe, our colorist, I talked to him about um, really making it like a, a bright, uh, optimistic-looking book um, that would be appealing on the stands and, and next to a lot of, like, the darker fare that's out there, 
would sort of stand out by being a little more traditional. So um, I think the textures and the color schemes, all those things about the look of him really appeal to me. What's different about the textures in this book from space, would you say? Do you, I mean, do you, are you using a lot of reference with sea life and things like that? Or? Yeah, definitely. And, and a lot of the what my thinking was when I went into... Um, when, they, when they said that we were going to redesign him, my, my, I was trying to do less is more a lot because I, I don't think a lot of the classic characters need to be redesigned. Um, and I don't like redesigns for redesign's sake. So I was trying to do things that were the illusion of something new because there is a part of there's a segment of the audience that really expects redesigns in every every new publishing initiative. Um, and so I wanted to serve that part of the audience too, but I wanted to make sure this really looked like classic Aquaman at the same time. Are there um, any little tweaks that you've put in that that maybe we can't you know to the untrained eye we can't see? Yeah, well the shirt, the like more pebble looking shirt shirt came from me. Um, and I, I changed a little bit the way that we draw the fins on his legs and on his sleeves. On the sleeves, it's kind of like a, like a shark tooth a little bit. And on the calves, instead of just a triangle like yeah, the classic yeah, yeah, one, yeah, it's kind of like a manta ray fin. So it gives some movement when we have him swimming or moving around. Um, so I just tried to think of like practical reasons like that, that an undersea, uh, hey, more, more people I know. I should bring up guest stars. So uh, many hecklers here. <laughs> Don't appreciate it. Uh, I tried to think of internal logic that an undersea community would have reasons that things would be certain shapes or certain textures um, when they're not surface dwellers and humans and Americans and things like that. So um, that was where I sort of came up with justification for the... Um, the fins and the scales and uh, all that. And even, like, you know, the colors make sense, I feel like, to him in the sense that, you know, so much sea life is really brightly colored and um, it's used for different sort of survival and emotional purposes um, underwater. So it was a lot of fun to, to do all that stuff and to talk it out with the creative team, and we still do some of that now if, if we tweak a costume a little bit. Uh, we all sort of get on an email chain and talk about it. It's a very, the shipping books twice a month now as we're doing has created a real like collaborative group environment, which is kind of fun. What, um, what kind of direction is writer, Dan Abnett's the writer of this book and it, which is, uh, he's, he's such a great guy and a great writer. Yeah. What kind of direction is he giving you in terms of creating this world that many people have thought of, but obviously this is your take. Well, I worked with him on a lot of the outer space stuff. We worked on um, another unnamed property from another company that I'm sure nobody's heard of. But uh, they don't, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is, these seem like fine, upstanding citizens. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> so um, we had a lot of experience in, in like a communicational shorthand in terms of world building and things like that from doing a lot of like outer space uh world building which is a lot more intense and um, Atlantis was sort of laid out at least in um, human myth a little bit um, so it hasn't been discussed as much and a lot of stuff comes up as we go along like well what, what are their um, what are their ships going to look like you know their underwater craft and when they get to land will they be able to fly and things like that and, and so how would they how do they do that um and we kind of discuss it. it. It all sort of starts with Dan, and, and Dan is good about, he'll give me, he'll say kind of like, I'm thinking something like this, but if you have ideas, go with that. Um, so he sort of gets my, jogs my memory, my creativity a little bit, and then uh, I sort of move from there, which is nice and, and just a real comfortable way to work. And then because we have a couple different artists all working on the book at the same time, they start to weigh in with their sensibilities, and it's kind of a fun process. The, the design stuff has all been a lot of the most fun things in, in the series. Yeah, it seems like such a collaborative process now. There's so many, we're double shipping books, so obviously things are coming fast and furious. And do you find your creative process changed by having other artists on there? Or Yeah, I've actually seen some of the ways that they work just in terms of 
how they how they approach the workload. The part of comics that nobody ever talks about is the soul-crushing, constant workload that that it has. Um, and they're called deadlines, Brad, and they're very important. And I, mean, I nobody love ever them. told me they were important until I got on this book, <laughs> and then suddenly everybody's all over me about it. But you know, it's one of those things. We all work at home, so you don't see how other people work or what other people are doing. Um, and then this is as close as you get is when you're all turning in right. pages yeah. from a book at the same time and you see a little bit what people are up to and how they're handling things like that. So it's been interesting and given me ideas about how to tweak my work process to be faster or more efficient. Or So I'm implementing some of those things as we speak and seeing how that, how that goes. And it's all like a trial and error and it's all very individual. What works best for one person doesn't work for another. And so... This is what you're drawing right now is reminding me how how much focus do you have on making sure that Aquaman's hair looks amazing? Because <laughs> uh, it do, looks fantastic right now. I do enjoy hair a lot because there's so much there's so many storytelling things that you can do with hair. You can suggest so much movement and mood of the character and things like that. The characters are right out here. <laughs> he is. This guy has great hair too. Let's just bring him up. Looks great shirtless. <laughs> Good just job. Talk, All right. Just talk to him and his wife. Yeah. Fi fiance, excuse me. Yeah, get it right, man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then especially with Aquaman, when you're underwater, then it's it's really like waving around and moving, and Mara's is such a big focus, too. So, um, yeah, the hair's been a lot of fun, and then Gabe colors it intensely and, and is, like, right on the same page with the hair. So, uh definitely been something that we hear about in a lot of the comments is like man Aquaman really stepped up his hair game <laughs> you have it's beautiful hair it's very important to me as a man with beautiful hair myself it's very important <laughs> yeah, I could tell by your silence that you're obviously in agreement <laughs> so is that difficult for you you know constantly in motion you're all these characters in the ocean I know you've drawn a lot of stuff on land but is that something that you Foresee no, that, being a challenge, a lot of constant motion, constant changing? Uh, I think that's stuff that I tend to do anyway. Uh, I've had people say that my hair always looks really flowing anyway. So uh, I'll post on social media, I'll post cropped sneak peeks of a cover or something with a, with a face, and people will comment that uh, something about it being underwater, and, and I'll have to reply and say, well, these aren't underwater, that's just the way that I do hair. <laughs> Um, so you are natural for this book. I'm just, uh, everything's in motion. Everything's moving along. <laughs> Hair should always be in motion. Yeah. Unless you don't have any and then, yeah. you know, that's just bad genetics. Can't help it. So you've done a lot of books in space and now you're doing a book underwater. Is there any, do you find yourself preferring one over the other? Or? Uh, I'm definitely, I've I done so much in space, like, uh, probably like six years worth. Man. I mean, that's a long time to do that seven days a week, you know. So uh, I was maybe a little burned out on lanterns and cosmic guys and uh, just that style of the grind. So this has really been... Um, Is there anything you're looking really forward nice to drawing to in the Aquaman world? Uh, definitely the animals that I've done the past couple of days has really been a blast. And like, not only animals, but you're making up animals, you know, I'm doing like weird fish dinosaur hybrids and stuff and uh, sharks with wings and things like that. It's really cool and fun to pull from reality, but, but change it. And the, the trick of making something completely unreal look real is a fun thing to me. Yeah. You know, making something look like it feels like a shark, but clearly a shark wouldn't have Muscles. Gun mounts. Yeah, yeah like human, human musculature and, and uh, dragonfly wings and things like that. Yeah. It looks awesome. So what are you working on now with the, with the book? What issue, what issue are you working on? Uh, I, I'm just finishing six. Uh, and then I, I don't know. I need to talk to them this weekend about <laughs> what one I'm moving to next. There's a lot of hopscotching with the schedule because you're drawing, you know, 
two to three artists are working on issues at the same time. So, uh, you know, comics have kind of become that anyway. So at least you're getting more of them with that at this point. Oh, yeah. It seems kind of, it seems like such a tricky thing to have guys working on things concurrently. Uh, probably most tricky for the editors, and I pity them, because yeah. they have to make it all fit together and make sense, and um, I can feel their stress through the phone sometimes. Well, they don't um, need, they don't actually sleep, so. Right. Well, who does? Yeah. I mean, why, why sleep when you can just not? I don't sleep. I slept on the plane on the way here this morning, and that's about it. Yeah, you should do a whole panel up here about when you uh, should have several artists come up and talk about lack of sleep. I'm pretty sure nobody would be able to give a cognizant sentence if that's <laughs> the case. The level of detail here is just unbelievable. I mean, have you... Were there artists that influenced you as a kid that had the same level of detail as you? Uh, yeah, I was always into... I definitely was more drawn to the line detail type of art than you know like a heavy heavy shadow yeah. um, negative space positive space blacks and whites kind of thing um, did you have a favorite art artist Garna? Uh, I feel like it evolved so much I was like a big uh, fan of both the Romitas finish this off will you Colorist, colorist extraordinaire Alex Sinclair, people. <laughs> um, I was into a lot of, like, 60s, 70s, 80s artwork. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that sort of evolved. I feel like different eras of my life, the answer would be completely different. So it's always, I'm flummoxed every time somebody asks, because I'm like, well, when do you mean? <laughs> Are there any other DC Comics characters that you'd want to dig into, either in Aquaman or... Oh, yeah. Um, well, Superman is in issue six, and I've, I've drawn plenty of Superman, but I oh, never yeah. get tired of it. Um, I always want to come back to Superman. Um, and then his whole cast, actually, like Supergirl would be super fun, and no, no pun intended. Um, uh, I started out drawing with the Bat characters, but... Um, that whole universe never gets old either. Uh, I'm a little burned out on the Lantern stuff at the moment, but I definitely feel like I'll want to get back there. I didn't do a lot of Hal Jordan and Green Lanterns. I did a lot of Sinestro and then Star Sapphire and White Lantern and, and different offshoots. So I, I, I feel like I'll get to a point where I want to come back and do some more of that. And, uh, and I've always been a huge Flash fan, so I definitely want to get some time on the flash at some point yeah i can't wait the stuff looks amazing thus far oh thanks are you inking your own stuff or are other people no uh i'm not great with it I can sort of like fumble my way through at conventions and do it. Um, but my inker is a guy named Andrew Hennessy, mm -hmm. and he's really masterful. Um, and we're really sort of mind meld in sync in terms of what we want to have a book look like when we come on to it. So I just hold on tight to him and don't let go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, when we started the Lantern stuff, we got on the phone and we were like, both of us were kind of saying some influences of outer space environments and what we wanted to approach it like and it was just exactly the same thing and then um, we kind of did the same thing going into Aquaman and uh, just had the same what appeals about art to both of us is exactly the same and I feel like when you work with somebody like that you, you know, it, it would be a shame to walk away from that don't deprive them of work let them work let a man work. What's that? Let him work. Yeah. Even watching you do these bubbles is so soothing. <laughs> Can I hire you to do this? Really? I'm stressed, so stressed out. <laughs> Looks beautiful. 
Awesome. Thanks. Love it. Beautiful. Awesome. Cool. Give it up for Brad Walker. <laughs> Thanks. Let's uh, let's let's give this thing away, unless you want to keep it. Sure. No, I don't want it. Uh, so I I want to I want a Brad Walker fan, not not necessarily an Aquaman fan. So can somebody name me the new Fifty Two series that Brad worked on? <laughs> what was that? New Guardians. That's yeah, it. One. Green Lantern New Guardians. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Brad Walker, yeah, everyone, give it up. Thanks, guys.